Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and today I'm going to be giving you my December wrap up. I read 11 books in the month of December which is actually really surprising to me because I hit two reading slumps in December and I didn't think I was going to read more than three books but I pleasantly surprised myself. While I'm on the subject of my reading slumps, I will say that I tried to read Vicious by B.E. Schwab. It was on my end of the year TBR and I made it through the first couple chapters and there was nothing wrong with the story. I actually liked what was happening but I guess it just wasn't what I wanted to read in the moment and it put me in a really bad reading slump because I was forcing myself to read something that I wasn't in the mood for. So with that being said, I did DNF Vicious, but of course I have plans on returning to it later and finishing the story. But I will say that I didn't read a book for like two and a half weeks in December because of Vicious. With that out of the way, I did read seven new books in December and I reread four of my old favorites. And like I did in my previous wrap up, I'm going to be talking about all of my rereads at the end of this video. The first book I finished in December was The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. This is the first book in the Lost Queen trilogy and this is an early medieval YA historical fiction story and it follows the story of a Scottish queen who is kind of forgotten in history even though she was one of the greatest queens of all time. And what's interesting about her is she was actually the twin sister of the man who we know through history as Merlin from the King Arthur stories. I gave this book five out of five stars. If you enjoy historical fiction, I definitely recommend this one, but because it is historical fiction and it's very character driven and there is a lot of plot, but because the story is so long, you don't really feel like things are happening. So it does feel like it's moving pretty slowly. But if you enjoy those types of books, I really, really liked this one. And I didn't know what I was going to think of it because I haven't heard anyone talk about this book, but I was pleasantly surprised. This book follows the main character from the time she's a little girl throughout her adulthood into like her 30s, I believe. So it follows her as she grows up and becomes queen. There's also a lot of magical elements in the story as well and then of course it's YA so there's a romance. Magic system was super super interesting. The next book I read was The Winter's Curse by Marie Rutowski and this is the first book of a trilogy. I've been wanting to read this one for probably six years now and I've owned it for quite a few years as well and I just never picked it up but that is changing folks because I loved this book and I'm definitely going to read the rest of the trilogy pretty soon. I don't know how I feel about the ending of this one because just the way it left off, like I never would have guessed that it would have left off the way it did. So I'm anxious to see what happens in the second book. If you don't know, this is a YA political fantasy. It doesn't really have any magical elements in it, but it's set in like a fantasy-esque world. And it has a heavy focus on politics and relationships and also slavery. It deals with a lot of political issues. Essentially in this world, one country has taken over another country and they rounded up all the people that were native to that country and made them become slaves. And the first book starts out when the main character purchases a slave for herself. And this sets off a series of events that completely disrupt the political world and all of the politics, not just in her city, but in her country. And of course, there's a cute romance. This book also has a heavy focus on music, which is very special to me because I'm a musician. The main character is essentially a piano prodigy, which is an instrument that I also play. So I really connected to that part of her character. I really loved it. Five out of five stars. Definitely recommend if you're into YA fantasy. And while it is about the politics, I will warn you that the romance is the main focus of the story. Next, I read The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is another YA fantasy that has been on my TBR for many years and I finally got to it this month. I really liked this one, but I will say that it was missing something for me. It's a very character driven book and there is plot, but the beginning plot had me hooked and then the end had really great plot as well, but the whole middle section, which was the majority of the book, didn't 
have a whole lot of plot happening. And that usually doesn't bother me with books, but for some reason it was hard for me to plow through the middle of this book. I actually set this one down and didn't pick it up for about another week. So that kind of tells you more about my reading experience with this one. But overall, I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the romance and just all the the mystery behind this one because if you don't know, the main character is a princess who was set up in an arranged marriage and she escapes the palace and runs away on her wedding day and flees to a far away small town where no one can find her. Except for two people. One is an assassin sent to kill her and one is the prince whom she was supposed to marry. Obviously the assassin doesn't reveal his identity and then the prince doesn't want to reveal his identity either. So throughout the whole book you don't know which one is the person who is supposed to kill her and which one is the person she was supposed to marry. I didn't know how that was going to work in the story, but it's actually super interesting the way the author did it. So you have chapters from the two male perspectives and sometimes they're labeled with the person's name and sometimes they're labeled with the assassin or the prince. So throughout the whole book you're trying to guess which one's which. And I will say I kind of want to reread this one eventually just to see if I can pick up on the hints. I'm usually pretty good at guessing the mysteries of books and I thought I had this one pegged and I was wrong. So I'm very confused honestly because I remember there were at least two instances where the main character was interacting with one of the male love interests and you knew him by name and then in one of the other chapters of the assassin or the prince they would bring up something that happened in their interaction with her earlier when you knew what their names were. So it was like if she only said that to guy number one, then how does guy number two know about it if they are who they are at the end of the book? Does that make any sense? It was like the author was dropping clues if you paid real close attention and I made the connections, but then I was wrong about their identities and I don't know how that happened. I really hope I'm not confusing you and I hate to keep talking about this one, but I'm just so frustrated because it's like the author dropped false hints or it was like she dropped hints so that you would think it was one person and then she completely changed it at the end just for the sake of changing it. I don't know. This book really frustrated me in that aspect. Not because I was wrong, but because literally the hints that she gave, the assassin could have only been one person and it wasn't that person. So like, are we just going to throw all that information out the window just for the sake of dramatic effect? Just for the sake of shock? I did really love the characters and the story, but for that reason and because it was so slow in the middle, I had to give it four stars instead of five. But this book left off on a major cliffhanger, so I'm ready to finish the rest of this trilogy. And next, I read Supernova by Marissa Meyer, which is the finale, the third book in the Renegades trilogy, and oh my gosh, five out of five stars for sure. I absolutely love this trilogy and I loved the finale. If you don't know, Renegades is a YA dystopian superhero supervillain story. There are two main characters. One is a renegade and the renegades are this group of superheroes who have formed this giant organization that is now international and they're essentially the governments of the world. And while they do have good intentions, their system is flawed because it's essentially a dictatorship. And then the second main character is an anarchist who is set on taking down the renegades. This series is such a fun ride. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the superhero powers. My goodness, I love everything about this series. And some people don't like these books because they say there's not enough action, but I don't really get that. It's definitely YA action. It's not blood, guts, and gore type action, although there is some of that in this third book, Supernova. I absolutely loved this conclusion and oh my gosh, the epilogue. The epilogue, y'all. Holy crap. We have to have a companion spinoff series. We just have to. We have to. I was completely floored. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to think anymore because of that epilogue. Like, Marissa Meyer got us good. Although I absolutely loved the series and loved the finale, I will say that 
you know, objectively, I see some faults in it. I don't necessarily have any complaints because I loved it anyway, despite the flaws. But the storyline was way too convenient in a lot of places. So just be aware of that. But I definitely rate books off of my enjoyment level. I don't necessarily rate them objectively, although I can be an objective reader. I also read The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson, and this was my first Brandon Sanderson book. And actually, I started this book several months ago, but my loan from the library expired and I had to return it. But it became available for me again this month, so I decided to go ahead and finish it before the year ended. And I really liked it. The main characters, I believe, are 14 years old, and so in that aspect, like with the characterization, it felt like a middle grade, but at the same time, the world and the storytelling was so mature that it almost felt like an adult novel. So it was kind of like a weird mix, but it worked. This world and the magic system is super, super unique. Essentially, there are these people called the Rhythmatist, and they are able to draw things that come to life. And they use these drawings called chocolings to fight in wars. The chocolings are essentially their weapons and it's a form of warfare. And the story follows these two young characters who attend this school for rhythmatists and non-rhythmatists. One of the main characters is a rhythmatist failing her classes and the other is a non-rhythmatist, but it's his dream to become one. And they have to band together to solve a mystery when suddenly students of their school start disappearing. This story is so interesting and super unique and I can see objectively that this is a five star novel, but based off of my enjoyment, because I didn't necessarily connect with the characters or the story, so based off my enjoyment, I would give it probably a four star rating, maybe a 4.25. But because this book was written so well, I felt like it was deserving of five stars. Next, I read The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody, and I have a ton to say about this book, so I'm thinking about making a separate review for it. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would be interested in because I do have a ton to say about it because while I did love the story, there were some things like technicalities that really made it hard to get through this book, honestly, even though I loved the story. If you don't know, this is a YA contemporary story and it's very hard hitting but it's also very cute and light and fluffy and it has a really adorable romance. It follows an 18 year old girl who is stuck on New Year's Eve in the Denver airport and this is a really big deal for her because on New Year's Day the previous year her best friend was killed in an accident. She has a very hard time in her grief and the last thing that she wants is to be stuck in an airport on the anniversary of her best friend's death. And she is going frantic through the airport trying to get on a different flight, but all the flights are either being canceled or delayed because of this giant snowstorm. While she's going frantic through the airport, she accidentally runs into this really cute boy and because they have the same phone cases, they accidentally swap phones and her phone is super important to her. She's very, very attached to it since her best friend's death because it contains the last text message that her friend had ever sent her right before the accident and she has never read it before. And so then she's even more frantic to find this guy and get her phone back. And then of course, because it's a romance, you know that once they meet back up with each other, they decide to just spend the rest of their time in the airport together while they're stuck there on New Year's Eve. And it's the typical YA romance where the guy brings the introverted girl out of her shell. But it is super, super cute, super adorable. I am a hopeless romantic. So, I mean, if something like this were to happen to me, you know, I would be there for it. The main reason why I wanted to read this book is because of the grief. And that's probably its biggest flaw, in my opinion, is the way grief was handled. I have experienced several deaths in my young lifetime and a couple of them were very traumatic deaths and I don't like the way that grief was portrayed in this book. I don't think it was realistic and I think it can be damaging to someone who is grieving. Just some of the things that were said in this book really rubbed me the wrong 
way. And this book goes back and forth in timelines. It has the present day where she's stuck in the airport on New Year's Eve. And then it also has flashbacks of just random moments of her and her best friend's friendship. And then also moments of her in therapy after her best friend's death. And the second biggest flaw I found with this book is the way therapy is portrayed. I am a behavioral health student. I'm studying psychology to become a therapist, to become a counselor. And I can tell you right now that the way therapy is portrayed in this book is not realistic. This therapist should be fired, in my opinion. She says things that are completely inappropriate, completely unprofessional, and if you've never been to therapy before and you read this book, you would be completely steered away from ever going to counseling ever in your life. And I just want to tell you that it's not realistic. That's not how therapy is in real life. In the acknowledgments, the author mentions that she consulted a real therapist in the writing of this novel, but I don't see how. Even though I was loving the story, I almost DNF'd this book because of one thing that the therapist said. I was just so angry. I was so angry that I didn't even want to continue reading this book because it was just so bad. Completely unprofessional completely just inappropriate. And if anyone has actually studied psychology, if anyone is actually a therapist, you know that you never ever say some of the things that she says to her client. You never say those things to any client. And in my opinion, the therapist made her grieving experience even worse by some of the things she said because they were so damaging. I was just not a fan. I was so mad, but I'm trying to look past those issues because I did really love this book. I loved the story. I loved the characters. I loved the romance. I loved everything else about this book. But I could not give this book a 5 star rating because of those reasons. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 star rating. But honestly, the more I think about all the flaws in it, the more I want to lower that rating. I just feel bad because I really did love this book. But those flaws were so damaging to anyone who is grieving. I just, mm. I'm actually going to go ahead and get into the rereads and you'll understand in just a second. I reread the second and third books to the Delirium trilogy by Lauren Oliver and then I also read for the first time the Delirium stories which are three novellas following three of the different side characters in the Delirium trilogy. I can't decide which one's my favorite of these three but right now the one I'm remembering the most is the one about Raven because it had such an emotional impact because Raven in the trilogy was a very closed off character. She didn't show hardly any emotions and she was also very hesitant to share anything about her past. So it was nice to be inside her head and know a lot more about her. But I think Hannah's perspective was my favorite of the three. I liked being in her head. I liked her voice and honestly I liked her voice in this novella better than I liked the main character of the trilogy's voice. And Hannah does have chapters in the third book from her perspective, but I felt like her perspective felt different in this novella than it did in the third book. Anyway, I really liked these. I don't necessarily have a rating for them, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And then on into my rereads of Pandemonium and Requiem. I really enjoyed these. I will say that I don't like them as much as the first book. I reread the first book in the month of November and so I continued on with the trilogy this month just because it felt weird to leave the trilogy incomplete at the end of the year so I just went ahead and finished them. I really loved these books the first time I read them in high school and it's been several years since then so I decided it was time to reread this trilogy because it used to be my favorite dystopian and I wanted to see how my thoughts changed now that I'm a lot older. Now with my reread I totally totally recognize why people hated this third book. It's a really bad finale. <laughs> like nothing really happens except the angst between the two boys and the love triangle fighting over the main character. There are things that happen other than that but that's pretty much all I remember except for the very end when things go to crap. And upon my reread I have realized that I don't like either one of the love interests. Not that I don't like them as characters. I just I don't ship them. I don't ship either one of them with a main character. Although I will say I really liked the original love interest in the first book and I did ship them in my reread of the first book, but after reading these, I don't like the first love interest with her anymore. He doesn't deserve her in my opinion. And then the second love interest felt like he only wanted to be with her because it was the first girl that he had ever like 
had a connection with, he had ever had any kind of real interaction with. It didn't feel like they had any real chemistry. So I honestly don't like either one of them with her anymore. I also read The Lightning Thief, which is the first book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. I've read this book so many times and I decided I wanted to reread the rest of the series but I felt weird starting with the second book so I reread this first book for like the fifth or sixth time. I really enjoyed it because I mean it's Percy Jackson but I will say after so many rereads it just doesn't catch my attention anymore but I'm hoping that changes with my rereads of the rest of the series because I've never reread those before. If you don't know, this is a middle grade series following a little boy named Percy Jackson who finds out that he is a demigod. And the last of my rereads was completely spontaneous. I reread City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare, which is book two in the Mortal Instruments series, which used to be my favorite series of all time, and I still have very fond memories of it and I'm such emotionally connected to it because this is the series that really got me into reading. I've been wanting to reread this series for several years now and I reread the first book but I never continued on with my reread. But then when I was reading Vicious and it put me in a reading slump, I decided the best way to get out of my reading slump was to reread one of my old favorites. So I randomly picked this one up and I loved it. I love the Mortal Instruments, although the older I get, I recognize its flaws and I recognize why people don't like it if they're reading it for the first time now. I definitely think it's one of those series that you have to read before you're like 17 or else you just won't appreciate the angst and the, the YA-ness of it. I had forgotten a lot of the things that happened in this book. Also, now that the TV show has come out and I mean it's finished now, but like after watching all of those episodes, my brain is kind of confused on what was actually canon. So it was nice to give this one a reread. All right, those are all the books that I read in the month of December. I was gonna try and upload this video like a couple days ago, but I just couldn't bring myself to post my wrap up before the year ended, before the month ended because what if the last book I read in December was one of my favorites of the year, you know? Like, so I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But anyway, I managed to somehow read 11 books despite my slump and I'm very proud of myself. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book was that you read in the month of December. Mine was definitely Supernova. And before you go, I have one last thing to show you and trust me, you want to stick around to see what this is. Look at him! Look! He's so cute! Everyone, this is Bear. My parents got a new puppy unexpectedly. Basically, my step-grandmother got a puppy for Christmas and he was just too much for her to handle because, you know, he cries. And puppies require a lot of attention. So she ended up giving him to my stepdad. So we have a new little German Shepherd puppy. His name is Bear. He's adorable and we love him. And he will not stay this little for very much longer. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more bookish content by me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.